What's up? Welcome to the Eastern Sierra. This is where I'm going to be doing a training camp for the next four or five days. And I have great hopes of putting together a pretty big route that I will be attempting in about three weeks. I'm going to share more details in future episodes. But right now I just love to show you a little bit of my training and the beauty that we find in the Eastern Sierras. Super excited that you're here. Welcome to my Eastern Sierra training camp. So the reality of this training block in the next few days is there is a lot of unknowns. There's gonna be a lot of challenges. I'm on the wrong trail again. Also, I just ripped my pants. I really feel that anytime I just put myself out there in training or I go and tackle something that I'm curious about, I always grow. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward just to learning, hopefully putting together something that's pretty spectacular. All right, I am currently in my car. I just got to the trailhead and it snowed last night high up on the mountains. Not anything low down here, but um, yeah, a cold front rolled in yesterday while I was making my way to the summit of Mammoth and Mammoth Mountain, and that was crazy. I, I don't think I've ever been in such strong winds. <laughs> And it was late in the day, so it wasn't a great time to be up there. So I descended quickly, but I uh, woke up this morning to rain, to uh, wind. Yeah, it's pretty socked in up top, but this section of the route, there's one small climb and then I'm gonna be uh, traversing some lakes, just going around some lakes. So we're gonna stay a little bit lower today. I just stepped outside and man, it is cold. <laughs> the weather app on my phone so that it, it feels like 29 degrees Fahrenheit, which that's a big jump when you've come from 85 degrees. So obviously I've been in much colder temperatures, but you know, when it's so drastic, like overnight, <laughs> yeah, it kind of hits you a little bit differently. I am loading up the pack with some layers uh, just in case, but I've just put on some uh, waterproof pants over my tights and now I'm just doing the upper layer and and then I'm gonna head out because truthfully this is this is actually really good uh, I know I need to be in all different types of weather and that's how I get better at using my gear and just kind of um, navigating through you know the challenges that come with bad weather and I can't expect that every day that I run and that I train it's gonna be ideal weather. So I am grateful for this because it just makes the training better. It makes me better. All right, time to get after it. And where down we go, 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 go. Where down we go, 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 go. So where down we go, 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 go. down we go. Oh, look at that. Going uphill with this pack. Woo! It's a great strength workout. <laughs> Pausing here just for a second, taking this view almost to my course that I'm gonna be on for the rest of the day. Had a just about ready to hit about 550 feet of climbing to get to it. Um, not bad though, it's just less than a mile so. Sometimes um, some of the routes that I'm gonna be doing, I'll have to hike in a couple miles, so not bad. But as you can see, there is a little bit of snowfall overnight up there on the peaks. The wind is absolutely ripping, so very happy I have this warm puffer. I've been wearing this on my face, glasses. You know, if you have the right gear, it makes such a difference. Also, I just, ripped my pants. I was jumping over this jagged tree stump. Well, 
yeah, actually the entire trunk of the tree. As if I was a steeplechaser. <laughs> One of the branches snagged my pants. Thankfully I have tights on underneath, but ah, love these pants and they're not cheap. <laughs> Pretty here. Gosh, I love this trail. Pine trees all around. One of my favorite smells. Sun's starting to peek out a little bit. What is up? tell you what's up with me I'm freaking tired <laughs> oh man my body is sore especially like my neck and my shoulders and I know that's from wearing the big heavy pack and just putting in long days um, today we are gonna be uh, going further but not up in the high country so not nearly as much climbing as I have been doing also the weather is so much nicer so um, I'm wearing shorts. This is my first time wearing shorts and uh, it's about 42 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which um, that's still cold to me, but man, I really notice a difference from just the past few days. It feels a lot warmer and no wind. So just a light little breeze. This is like, in, in my opinion, where training um, really starts to take shape when my body is just feeling the effects of training, when I'm feeling tired. Uh, you know, I started off this morning a little bit slower than I wanted to, but I just kept reminding myself that this is actually the training effect that I wanted because I have to stay focused, keep moving, and keep putting in efficient work even when I'd rather stay in bed and you know maybe just go get a massage and kick my feet up. <laughs> uh, we're gonna keep pushing through. So really excited to see this part of the course. Uh, lots of pine trees to start off, uh, just lining the trail, which I absolutely love. It's pretty flat, so it'll be a good way to warm up. I've got in a good breakfast. I actually, I actually went to Starbucks, uh, got just a, an egg sandwich, cup of coffee, and a muffin. So got lots of calories packed in me. It's kind of my favorite way to start the day, greens, reds, and electrolytes. So body feels uh, energized and carved up. Um, muscles are a little bit achy, but I'm sure once I warm up, I'll, you know, we won't think about that anymore. Oh yeah, very stoked to be carrying just the smaller pack. So the pack that I've chosen today is the one that uh, I wore in all the 200 mile races. This is the Camelback Apex Pro. And one of the things that I love about it, it has that Reco in it or Reco, R-E-C-C-O, which is what emergency responders uh, use to find people so I can be located. It's really cool. There's no like, you don't have to like plug it in or anything. It's just a piece that's woven into the pack. So I, I really love this for that, um, that I can be found. So uh, yeah, much smaller pack today. I'd say it probably, it, it still weighs a, a good 10, 11 pounds, uh, but that I need that. Uh, got some layers in there. Um, headlamps, lots of food. Um, I do know there is a place for me to fill up liquid, um, like in an hour, hour and a half tops. So um, I'm very grateful to not be running with five liters of water like I have been. And um, yeah, that's that's where a lot of the weight, you know, comes from. So, all right, let's get started. Right now I'm just working up this road. I'm gonna head over to a lake. I've got a gorgeous view as I do it. I'm about 15 minutes in and already taking sips of my carbon electrolyte drink. I'm using G1M and lemon lime flavor. Man, it feels good to be running in just a regular pack. It's not super light, but it definitely feels lighter than what I have been running in. Probably half the size. 
Also, a few thousand feet lower, the sun is shining, just a light wind, feeling really good. You know, I'm not imagining uh, smooth days. I think that um, even just looking at the route, there's gonna be some challenges. I'm, I might get lost a couple times. Dude, this looks like the right route. Maybe they'll take the fence down. Yeah, this doesn't seem right. I'm definitely on a path right now that's questionable. <laughs> Wondering if I'm on private property. I just crossed over a creek and the whole area does not look like it's been a, I don't know, let's just say well-traveled and very long. It looked a little, really sketchy. <laughs> it's like someone left a little boat out there. Okay, there's no way. All right, I'll check back. <laughs> I'm 16 miles in. This is an out and back today. I don't have people training with me, so everything I do has to be an out and back or a big loop. I'm definitely not gonna run backwards on the section that I just did. Past a pretty sketch van. I could see it in the distance, just parked randomly just off the side of the road. It's like a Dodge van with the windows all covered up. My first instinct always is don't act afraid. And of course, I, I think it's also good don't ever assume something bad or the worst or anything like that because a lot of the times we can be wrong. Being a woman who has trained in endurance running for over 20 years now um, and a mom, I do tend to take more precautions than not. I call it my bold stance. I slow down and I walk very strong and tall and I looked straight inside the van and a uh, little shady. There are some people in there and I just continued on. It could be totally harmless, but I don't need to find out. And if there's other routes for me to take, I'm just gonna take another route. So all good, feeling good, I'm gonna continue on. I'm on the wrong trail. <laughs> Again. Oh man. So connecting mountain ranges requires a bit of a local roads so as you can see the the freeways down there but there's some dirt trails that run right alongside it to get to the next mountain so i mean it looked like this would be the right way going <laughs> going up the hillside but i just looked at the map and it dead ends and i thought oh maybe i can bushwhack down but it was like a steep drop off. My days have been a lot longer and shorter miles run because I'm doing a lot of this. A lot of bushwhacking and trying to make sure that this route is both legal and <laughs> and, and uh, awesome. I mean, this is an awesome route. There isn't really like a bad route in the Eastern Sierra, right? <laughs> One of the best parts is just knowing that I'm gonna learn something new that I can apply to something else down the road, but I'm also gonna hopefully finish a, a better version of myself. So um, I'm also gonna finish completely exhausted, <laughs> which is a good thing. I wanna get the best of me out there and put as much work in on this route as I possibly can. If you are ever in Mammoth Lakes and you wanna know where to go to get a good breakfast burrito, show you what it looks like. This is where you need to go. Old New York Deli and Bakery Company. They've got like five different types of breakfast burritos. I go for the mammoth. It's got potatoes, bacon, egg, cheese. They serve it with salsa. There's big calories. And uh, it's gonna be a long day out in the mountains today. So this will probably be the last like hot meal that I eat. Uh, actually like real meal that I eat before dinner. So um, at some point I will come back to my car in the middle of one of the runs and I can wrap this up, hide it. I got a little box here. Uh, can't leave food in your car because bears will come and get it. So I'll wrap this thing up pretty good, hide it inside the car and uh, that'll be like second meal in the middle of the day. So this thing's a beast. 
but uh, I'll eat this while I drive to the Trailhead right now. Got myself some coffee too. Uh, it is a beautiful bluebird day. I'm really looking forward to being out in the trails today, hammering out this course. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna take a pit stop here and fill my bottles. I do pause and just stare at this a little longer. Run number three for the day. Just pause really quick at a little general store, replenished with some food, some caffeine. And now I'm making my way up to the route. Actually, I'm on the route. Um, I'm pretty excited to see this just because at some point on this trail, I will be able to see June Lake. June Lake is beautiful and I have some great memories there so I'm excited I haven't been on this trail before it is golden hour I'm actually talking to Eddie on my phone right here say hi Ed hey. <laughs> he's been talking to me for the last hour uh, yeah I was back there I was way back there and I was uh, I heard a lot of gunshots. I'm sure they were far away, but you know, it's nice having Eddie to chat with. So we got June Lake way over there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm actually off my route now. I have to get back to my car. So I'll have like three, three miles to run now to get back to the car. And then we're gonna drive to the next spot, but just wow, taking this in because it's so beautiful. All right, so that is the conclusion of the first training camp in the Eastern Sierra. I have come home for a really quick moment uh, to see my son off to his first day of school, and then I'm gonna hop over to Flagstaff and see my daughter's uh, season opener, and then I'm actually now making sure that everything is ready to go for the next camp. So yeah, maybe not like ideal, like doing all this traveling in between this, this training and right before I do the attempt, but like, this is just how I've always done everything. You know, you put in good solid work and then, um, you know, also have a real life to live too. And, uh, got to keep up with the fam and the business. I also got sent some new poles, so we're going to take these with us next time and, and, and try these out too. So totally stoked. There is a training camp part two, which I hope that you will join me for. Um, training camp part two will be a lot longer. The footage will be a lot better because we will have a professional videographer with us for a big chunk of it. And then I will attempt to do this route that I've been training for all at once. And, and that I'm very excited to share with you. So just in a few short weeks, uh, I'll get to share the whole thing and talk about it in its entirety. Yeah, I'm excited. So thank you for joining me for this episode, the first episode, the first of many. This has been just really a, a dream come true to work on this project and bring a dream to life. It's pretty amazing what, what the things that we can dream up and then what happens when we go and try it. If that's any encouragement to you, whatever it is that you're working for, get after it.